I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we are looking at the Immersion RC RF power meter. This little device can measure the output power of your video transmitter. And we are going to be looking at the output power of some video transmitters and seeing, oh, are they honest? The other thing you're going to learn today is how dare Rotoriot think they could just change the color of it, slap their logo on it, and call it a special edition? How dare they? You're going to find out. Stay tuned. The Immersion RC RF power meter lets you measure the output power of really any RF device. The most common way people are going to use it is to check the output power of your 5 gigahertz video transmitter. Now, if you're a nerd like me, you can put these video transmitters on the bench and you can actually measure and find out if it, the manufacturer is being honest when they say 200 milliwatts or 800 milliwatts. Are you really getting that? And that's what we're going to do in this video. But the power meter has a lot of other uses. If you run races, uh, you've often probably struggled with knowing whether the racers are actually at 25 milliwatts or whatever the race limit is, or whether somebody's blasting at 800 milliwatts and knocking everybody out of the air. The same thing might be true for Crossfire. If you're at a big event like the International Open, and you've got a lot of Crossfire pilots, you can get interference if unless everybody turns their output power down. The RF power meter has what they call Scully mode, named after Joe Scully, the, the racing announcer which basically lets you wave it next to somebody's transmitter and get a general sense of if they're pretty close to the same power or way, way off. So it's useful there. Another way you might use it is to find out if your video transmitter or your radio is broken. If you run your video transmitter with no antenna for a long time and it just burns itself out, what you'll see is a reduction in output power that you can detect using this little guy. Now, this guy comes in at about $80, which is a lot for a toy, but for a tool, it's still a lot. But for an RF power meter, it's really freaking cheap. These things usually run minimum $500 and as much as two or $3,000, depending on what you want to do with it. And what Immersion RC has done is they have taken one of these super duper expensive power meters let's get it out of the box and they have calibrated this guy using the super duper expensive power meter so that you can get it's not as good as a three thousand dollar power meter of course but you can get roughly good enough measurements for the kind of things that we're going to do i want to address a little bit of an elephant in the room and that is that i'm using the rotor riot edition of this meter and some people will say well he's the using the Rotor Riot one just because he works with Rotor Riot. And that, that's actually true. And some people say, how dare Rotor Riot put their label on this and charge more for it just for the, having their label on it, to which I say they're not charging more for it. It's the same price as the one you would buy from GetFP or V or wherever. But the Rotor Riot edition comes with these adapters which do not come if you buy from anywhere else. So these are adapters that'll let the meter hook up to an MMCX, a UFL, and this is an SMA or RPSMA, whichever adapter it needs. They have these adapters and these guys, if you already have these, then who cares? You buy the black one if you like black, buy the red one if you like red. But if you don't have these adapters, you could pay another hmm, seven or eight dollars, maybe depending on where you bought them from. And the Rotary Edition gives those to you for free. So. That's all we're going to say about that, but I just want to point out, because I hear people sometimes, every Road of Riot project or product I've ever seen, they put their name on it and then they charge the same amount, or maybe they give you a couple extra things for free. So I don't know what everybody's so mad about. How dare they give you stuff for free? Anyway, moving on. Now, the video transmitter we're going to be working with has an MMCX connector, so I'm going to go ahead and screw on this adapter. MMCX adapter and I don't need to hook a battery up remember the old rotor uh, the old uh, immersion RC power meter that had an external battery this one has a built-in battery I'm just gonna plug this guy into the video transmitter great so now the video trans just for the record the video transmitter we're looking at here is the ready-made RC Cricut Pro V2 and the reason we're using that one is well <laughs> to be honest with you because it has an easy little plug to plug into and other people have pointed out that when I test these guys, I might want to make sure that they're actually transmitting video because some of them will go into a low power mode when they're not transmitting video. That's certainly something we can explore. But if we look at this right now, we can see that with it set to 25 milliwatts, we're getting 
20 to 20. Let's see if I bend that. Does that make a difference? We're up around 21 milliwatts. Now, in order to do this correctly, we have to make sure that we're on the right channel because the RF power meter has different calibration values for different frequencies. So right now I've got this guy on race one and I'm gonna go into the menu here. Race one is 5658 and I'm going to, there we go. 5658, oh, come on now, there, there we go. I'm just gonna take this down to the closest channel there. 5650 is pretty close. And I'm going to go back here. All right, so the video transmitter's on race one, 5658. The calibration value's on 5650, and it says it's outputting about 10 milliwatts. Well, that's a lot lower than I would expect. So there are a couple things that we could do to try and make this as scientific as possible. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a fan because a lot of these guys will overheat, even at 25 milliwatts, they might get a little hot and reduce their output power. Let's see if blowing some air over it causes it to wake up. Now I got the fan blowing on it here and we're gonna see if that causes it to cool down or to raise its output power at all. We can already see the output power has come up a little bit. It's about 12 milliwatts, but it's still not at the 25 milliwatts that we would expect. Let's just give it a second and see if that changes as it cools down. Yeah, it's kind of hanging around 13 milliwatts now. Let's do one more thing. Let's let's hook a camera up to it and just see if that affects whether it's actually transmitting at full power or not. And we can see even with the camera outputting, we're getting about 14 milliwatts uh, on channel race one. And so what we can do now is we can just go through the channels and that's why I'm using this video transmitter because the convenient push button makes it so easy. I'm going to go to race two and I'll need to update my race two is 5695. So 5695 is pretty close to 5700 and we'll check our output power. And 15 minutes later, here's the data that we've got. I tested the ReadyMade RC Cricut Pro V2 at 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, and 600 milliwatts output power. And here are the results that I got using the Immersion RC RF power meter. Now we have to take these results with a grain of salt. You may recall a video I did a little while back where I tested the AKK Ultimate video transmitter using a different tool to measure the power. The results were all over the board and I had to conclude that the tool I used was not accurate and I actually deleted the video and released a retraction. So these results are only as accurate as the Immersion RC RF power meter, which is certainly not as accurate as a $3,000 power meter, but it's supposed to have been calibrated. It's supposed to be just for this exact purpose. And it certainly is interesting that well, I mean, we see 112 milliwatts on race band one instead of 200, and we never really see it even get close to 600 milliwatts. Hmm, maybe the power meter is just messed up. Ah, I know what we should do. We should test another video transmitter like, oh, let's say a TBS Unify and see what it does. Now this is the Catalyst Machine Works Smooth Operator and I picked it because it has in it a TBS Unify 5 volts and it's darn near brand new. So it hasn't been beat to heck or anything like that. So like some of my other quads that have been in the field, I should probably put the smoke stopper on here because I'm not taking the props off. Let's see how it does in the exact same test. And here are the results of testing a TBS Unify race at 25 milliwatts. That's the new yellow line on the screen. It came in between about 35, 37 milliwatts, uh, maybe as low as 33, pretty consistent across the board. Uh, and so what does that tell us about these video transmitters? Well, it tells us pretty definitively that the Cricut is coming in lower than the Unify. But it's still hard to judge the absolute value of these things without a calibrated current source or power source rather um, to know that we're actually outputting 25 milliwatts or not. So is the Unify actually 35 milliwatts and coming in hot? Or maybe the Cricket's actually at 25 milliwatts and the Unify is coming in really hot. Or maybe the Unify is at 25 milliwatts and the power meter is reading wrong. We don't know. But what we can do is we can do a bunch of these tests. I am I am very encouraged by the fact that these tests don't have any crazy variations like the earlier round of testing that I did with the tool that wasn't working right. That tool showed 
race four, super weak, race seven, super strong. It was all over the place. We see in this testing uh, in the orange line that the ready-made RC seemed to be outputting a little more power on the higher channels, or maybe the current meter or the uh, power meter is, is not quite calibrated right. And we need to do some more testing to find that out. And I plan to do that testing. I've got a bunch of video transmitters that I want to test with this device and see how the results shake out. And that will tell us, well, frankly, it'll tell us a little bit about how accurate this device is. If they all have consistently high on channel seven, that is probably the power meter, not the video transmitters. Um, but that is going to be a topic for another video. Now that's just one way you can use the Immersion RC RF power meter. I've been showing it to you plugged directly into the video transmitter, but it comes with this little antenna and of course you can just hold it next to your quad and just see what it's outputting. Like, is this video transmitter even on or is it in race mode? I don't know. I'm just going to hold it right next to the antenna. I can see, you know, 15 milliwatts, 10 dBm. And now when I unplug it, oh, yeah, now it's clearly off. So it really lets you just get a rough sense of the output power of the of the devices. Is it even working? Is it in pit mode? And it can also be used in scully mode, which you access like so. There you go, this is scully mode, to see how close one device is to another. So let's say that this guy is transmitting at 20, uh, 200 milliwatts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it next to my transmitter with my transmitter turned on. I know my transmitter is at 200 milliwatts and then I'm just going to press up on the joystick and that will set the zero point. And now when I hold this next to any other video transmitter, if I see this line right about the middle, I know it's at about 200 milliwatts. If I see the line much lower, I know the I'm getting much less and much higher. I know I'm getting much more. So that's what you might use as a race director just to check everybody's power r roughly the day of the race. Well, all right, that is the Immersion RC RF power meter. It's about 80 bucks. Whether you buy the red Immersion RC version without the adapters or the black Rotoriot version with the adapters included, Whichever one you like, it's the same price. And uh, it's a pretty handy little tool, especially if you're a nerd like me who just likes to know, ooh, numbers and digits. And you can see we already are getting useful information about these video transmitters. I'm going to be using this a lot more. I'm going to be, in fact, the prototype, one of these that I had from Tony Cake that turned out to be miscalibrated and he took back and still hasn't sent back to me. But that's okay, Tony, because Rotoriot took care of me. I did a whole bunch of tests with the prototype one. This, these numbers are garbage. Don't like freeze frame this and try and these numbers are completely useful because the prototype one of these I had was miscalibrated. But I got a bunch of video transmitters I want to test and get a sense of, you know, just where they at, are at relative to each other. And I hope that this little guy is going to let me do it. Look for that coming up at some point in the future. Uh, look for a link to this little guy down in the video description. And uh, yeah, happy flying.